Okay, so welcome to part two. It is testing day. So I'm gonna tell you guys about my testing experience. I'm gonna give you the breakdown of what I did the day of my exam and how I prepared for it mentally. So my test was scheduled for four o'clock p.m. and I woke up at eight o'clock, did yoga, and then made a smoothie, and then I actually started studying. Now, I wasn't doing hardcore studying. I was looking at skimming at the Raymar document, and I was also skimming over my Mark Kilmick or Klimic notes. And I also went back to UWorld, and I looked at the incorrect column of, so there's like a section in UWorld where there's like a correct column of all the questions you got correct, and then there's an incorrect column. So I went to the incorrect column, and I just kind of skimmed through those questions, looked at the rationales, and pretty much did that for the whole time until my exam. Now, one thing I did do that is probably not a good idea was that I took my assessment to see if I would pass the NCLEX or not, or where I would be on the scale of passing with the NCLEX. And I think I was at like a 58% chance. I was literally borderline. And so that actually made me really nervous before my exam. So I would not recommend that at all. If you do want to do your assessment, I would definitely recommend doing that ahead of time and not the day before. So pretty much I did all of those things all the way up until 1.30. And then once 1.30 came around, I got so nervous. My anxiety was through the roof. I was pacing back and forth, couldn't sit still. And I'm the type of person when I have test anxiety, I can't eat. And a lot of people stress eat. I used to be that way, but for some reason, like as I've gotten older, I'm the type where I can't eat when I'm stressed. So I was just pacing back and forth. And then I started doing some self-talk. I was like, what can I do to calm myself down? So what I did was I got my yoga mat out, meditated, or actually before I meditated, I cried for about five to 10 minutes, but I needed to release it. I needed to let it out because I did not want to go into my exam too nervous because sometimes I overthink when I'm too nervous. And so I cried for about five to 10 minutes. Then I started to meditate. And meditation is something that I picked up throughout the time of me first taking my exam to now. And it has been so helpful and it really, really helped calm my anxiety and my nerves. And followed by my meditation, I did a prayer and I just spoke good things into the universe and into existence. And I really feel like that helped me mentally going into my exam. Of course, I was still nervous, but it really reduced it a lot. So 3.15 comes around and I'm like, okay, I need to leave for my exam. So jump in the car, get all my stuff together, have like my little fanny pack. So I get there around 3.40 and I'm deciding, should I take my study stuff with me or should I leave it in the car? At that moment, I was like, you know what? I'm not gonna freak myself out anymore. Let me just not bring it and just trust the process. So the only thing that I brought was my phone and I brought my fanny pack that had my wallet and stuff in it. So right when I walked in the door, we had to have our mask on because of the whole COVID-19 and all that's going on right now. We were all separated, like all across the room. So if you've taken the test before all of this and you're taking it around this time, you're gonna notice a huge difference in the test preparation process. So get in and honestly, like I think I got in before my test even started. So really what they did was they took my picture, they put my phone in this pouch that was sealed, and then I had to put it in my locker along with my fanny pack and everything. So after I was done with that, I made sure I went to the bathroom so that I wasn't distracted, came back, took my palm scan, and that is when the test began. Y'all, this time around, I made sure I took my time, and I took my time so much that I had four minutes left when I was done with my exam. Like I pretty much took the whole exam time. And so for those who don't know, there's been an update with the test. Before I think it could go up to 265 questions and the minimum was 75. But during this time, they changed it to a minimum of 65 questions and then it goes up to like 130. So during this time around, I didn't use the headphones that come with the cubby because I realized that they were a lot more distracting than not putting them on. Because for me, the first time around, they pressed up against my ears so hard 
and they actually made my ears really sore. So I didn't use my headphones this time around. I only wrote on my whiteboard when it was necessary and I used the whiteboard to write down little mnemonics or sayings once I came across a question that related to that. So I'm answering the questions and I get to question 60. And I'm like, okay, this is the moment of truth. I either passed it or I failed it. It could cut off now or it could keep going. And so actually at question 60, it told me that I can take a break. And so I was like, okay, I'm guessing that, you know, more questions are gonna come after. So I took my break, came back from my break after doing my palm scan and all that stuff. And my computer was frozen, y'all. Like I couldn't even navigate forward. It was no forward button. There was no next button, no nothing. It was just the answer choices. I was still able to choose the answers, but I couldn't go to the next question. And so then I had to raise my hand and someone had to come and pretty much try and fix the computer. When they came over, the computer did not work at all for them either. So I had to switch computers which was really stressful because I'm like, oh my gosh, did it like get rid of all my questions before? But luckily it left off right where I had my last question. So as I resume my exam, literally it goes to question 61 then question 62 and it just keeps going up. Getting past question 60 was actually a huge relief for me because I did not feel that confident at all throughout those first 60 questions. Because all I know is that that first time I took the exam, it cut off at question 75 and I failed the exam. Now the only thing in my head was, okay, how long is this gonna go? And so of course it goes all the way up to 130. Like I literally did all the questions. So I had no clue how I did at all. And I'm not gonna lie y'all, I did not walk out of that test comfortable or confident at all. But one thing I will say is that I know that I learned so much information based off of all the resources that I used. So left the exam, pretty much rushed home to do the Pearson View trick and come to find out I couldn't even really do the Pearson View trick because my results were on hold. Y'all, it was a nightmare because I realized that the reason that my results were on hold most likely was because I had to switch computers during the exam. So based off of forums that I've read, usually when someone's results are on hold, it's because of a tech issue, because there's suspicious activity during the exam, or there was some type of problem related to the palm reading process of coming in and out of the exam. So I just assumed it was because I had to switch computers. But y'all, it was a dreadful process because each and every day for like every hour throughout the day, I was checking the Pearson View trick and it just kept saying that my results were on hold. And I'm over here reading forums on Reddit and all nurses of people who had similar issues, who found out their results in a couple of days. Some people said they found out their results in like eight days and somebody said they didn't know their results in two weeks. And so it was really stressing me out. I was also seeing people that literally took their test that same day that I took mine or the day after and they knew their results through the Pearson trick. And I was just like, oh my gosh, like the fact that people already know their results. And I'm over here stressing about when I could have any type of hint of when I will find out when I will have my results. Y'all, the process was really stressful. So if anybody's in that same boat, just wait it out and distract yourself. I know it's easier said than done. I barely did it. But that whole weekend I spent time with my girlfriend and I tried to do as much as I could to distract myself from looking at freaking Pearson View every second of the day. So I just wanna give you a timeline of when I found out my results. So I took my test on a Friday at 4 p.m. The Pearson View trick did not work because my results were on hold. And then finally, I was able to see the good results for Pearson View on a Tuesday at around 10 p.m. So I found out in about four days. And I guess that's the bummer for people who have results on hold. It's like that whole weekend, you're not gonna be able to find out your results until the beginning of the next week. So after I got the good pop-up, I was really happy, but then I was like, I saw people that had false positives after their stuff was on hold. So from forums, I saw that if your thing was on hold, some people would say that they got the good results and they found out that they actually passed. Or some people would say that they got their results, it changed to the good pop-up, but then they found out that they failed it. And so just to make sure I did the quick results on Pearson View, 
And you can only do this in, I think, 48 states. I forgot how many states it is. But you can only do it in a select few of states. So if you do have the opportunity to do the quick results, I would definitely recommend it. It's only $7. But I did my quick results and I finally had confirmation that I passed. And y'all, I screamed, jumped around. I was with my girlfriend. We screamed and jumped around for about like two hours. I know that my neighbors are probably like, what the hell is going on? I'm surprised I didn't get a noise complaint. I live in an apartment, so I know they heard all of that. But yeah, y'all, that's how it all happened. Now, one thing I will say that helped me tremendously mentally this time around was the fact that I didn't tell anybody about when my exam was, when I was taking it, not even the month I was taking it. So I would definitely recommend that because it takes a lot of pressure off of you. I remember the first time I took the exam, I was really stressed because everybody was hitting me up, asking me how I did, how I felt like the exam went. And this time around, I didn't get any of that, except for like from my family and my girlfriend, but it's way better than having so many other people asking you about the process. But yeah, that is it for this video. I hope that it was super helpful. I tried to organize part one and two to the best of my ability. So if you have any other additional questions, don't hesitate to leave them in the comment section. Also, don't be afraid to leave your testing day experience in the comment section. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will see you guys next time. Make sure you hit that like button and subscribe button if you haven't already and hit that notification bell if you wanna get updates on new videos. I will see you guys in the next video.